Thank you for joining me again today on our Side by Side. We're going to look a little bit more in Romans this week, and then next week, that's the week leading up to Easter, which is often called Holy Week. We're going to do something a little different as we prepare ourselves for the Easter weekend and the glorious message that we have to share about the resurrection. But coming back to this glorious chapter in this book, uh, this little epistle of Romans, which, as we said earlier, is regarded as like the very center point of the diamond. It's the sharp, sparkling uh, point of the, of the way when it's cut. And we now come to a part in it that sometimes is taken out. You know, people have a habit of taking bits of the Bible out uh, here and there, you know, one verse here, one verse there. And that may be okay in certain situations, but it needs to be set in context. And in speaking of things like diamonds, isn't that often the case that a diamond on its own without it being put in its setting doesn't seem to have the same effect? So what is the setting of this verse that we're thinking about this evening or this morning? It's verse 28, and it says, And we know that to those who love God, all things work together for good. That is, to those who are called according to his purpose. Well, the setting of that verse is really the setting of the, of the verses that we've had prior to that. And let me quote how William Hendrickson puts it. He says, Paul has shown that for those who are in Christ Jesus, there is now no condemnation. Verses 1 to 8. And then in verses 9 to 11, that they are indwelt by the Spirit, who will even raise their bodies gloriously. Then they receive the assurance that they are God's children, and as such his heirs, in verses 14 to 16. And then in verse 18, their present suffering for Christ and for his cause means that one day they will share his glory, a glory so marvellous that in comparison with it, hardships fade away into nothingness. And then they will dwell in that new heaven and earth to which all creation is groaning and looking forward. Verses 19 to 22. And they th then they themselves are groaning as they eagerly await their adoption. Verses 23 to 25. And then in all their weakness, the Holy Spirit helps them. That Spirit always intercedes for them in harmony with God's will so that this intercession, accompanied by wordless groanings, will be effective. So having built all of that up to that point, then Paul says, and, and, on top of all of that, we know that to those who love God, all things work together for good. Now this is a truth based partly on the, the, the foundation of all those things that Paul has already said, based on the work of the Spirit, based on this great f future and hope that we have, based on the assurance that we are not condemned, based on the fact that we are God's children, we can know that all things for these works together for good. I know that that can seem strange, and hard and difficult and even confusing to many people. You see, it's easy to say that all things work together for good until you come across something that's really complex, difficult, unpleasant. I mean, to say that a bit of an awkward inconvenience will work out for good, that might be all right, but what about a catalogue of difficult, troublesome things in your life? I am reminded of that story which I have used, and if you've heard it before, forgive me, but it's about the white horse. It's told in one of Max Lucado's books where he describes the events of this white horse that was so wonderful. This elderly man, this farmer from a peasant village, discovered this horse along with all his other horses who had gone away. Of course, when the horses had all disappeared, his neighbours said, oh, what a pity, old man, you've lost all your good horses. He said, well, we don't know yet. All we know that they're gone. And when this lovely white horse returned with them, then they all said, Oh, we're sorry, we know now you were right, we were mistaken. Oh no, he said, we don't know yet whether it's a good thing or a bad thing. All we know is that we've got a white horse we didn't have to have before, we didn't have before. Well, as time went on, the old man's son started to try to break in the white horse. 
The white horse was powerful and strong and threw the young man off. He broke his legs. And then the villagers turned and said to the old man, Ah, now we see it's a bad thing. That white horse is the worst thing that ever happened. Look at your son. He'll not be fit to work for you. You'll have to do all the work yourself. But the old man said, Well, do you know, I don't think you've really understood. All you can say is that my son has two broken legs. That's not good, but we don't know what the end of the story is. Well, they all walked away laughing and mocking the old man. But then, some time later, the king of the country went to war, and he called up all the young men that they should go and fight for him. But of course, the old man's son wasn't able to go to war because he had two broken legs. As all the other people's children, young men, were going off to war, they were crying and weeping as they left the village. They looked at the old man and they said, Now we know now, yes, it was a good thing for you, because your son, he doesn't have to go and fight. He may not. He may survive while others might not. The old man said, No, no, I don't think you've still understood. All we can say is that my son has two broken legs and is not going to war. We don't know yet whether this is going to be the end of the story. You see, that sort of picture describes or that sort of story describes for us a lot of different events that people will try to add up and say and assume or come to the conclusion And I suppose what it illustrates for us is this, is that sometimes we make the assumption that we think a thing is good or bad without knowing the end result. And yet, this verse seems to say to us, and I think it says it quite clearly, that we know that to those who love God, all things do work together for good. And that is an amazing truth. On the basis that we are not condemned, we are God's children, God's Spirit indwells us, God's Spirit pleads for us, we can say that yes, all these things in the great purposes of God will work out for good. But of course, I ask the question, what is the good? And what do you mean by good? Well, you see, that's another question, isn't it? Because what some person thinks is good is merely based on what they like. But what God sees as good is going to be something that is far, far superior to what we would assume And I think that's really at the very crux of this. God knows what is best for us. God knows how something will really produce in us that which will be ultimately determined and described as good. We think of Joseph who, as it's recorded in Genesis chapter 50 verse 20, where he says concerning those who had taken him prisoner and had been sold him off, that's his brothers, and how they had treated him so badly, and he said, you know, you meant it for bad, but God meant it for good. Not just God kind of ran in and tried to tidy up the mess. No, no, God was involved in it. God meant it for good. But it does say for good to those who are called according to his purpose. This is a promise in this chapter for God's children. This is for those who know and love him and for those who will put their trust in him. And of course, you have that option to do right now. You can put your trust in him. You can become one of his children. You can experience the promise working out in your life. But for those, this word, this promise is to them. Yes, it will. Everything will work out for good. We still go through times of pain and sorrow. We're not immune to that. But our tears are different because we know that there will be a good end. We experience disappointment. We experience all the same types of things that others do. But we have this hope and this assurance. I hope that that is a help for you in the midst of a pandemic, which many people think is overwhelming. It frightens, it threatens, it causes people to despair. And yet, I believe, and I've seen some little hints some little green shoots of the goodness of God already in this pandemic. But of course, what do I really know? (laughs) I don't know the big story. And in so many situations, even in my own life, I don't know the big story always. I know that God is doing a million things at any one time, but I know that the end of all of those things for every one of his children is good. And I want to encourage you today To be able then to pray in the knowledge of this, turn your prayers slightly in the direction of praise and thanksgiving, even when things are difficult. 
because God has your best interest at heart, even in the things that you're going through right now. And the Lord bless you this week.